Hello and welcome everybody to Money Cards. Today we are talking about chem face cards. Now, 100% plastic. We'll talk about materials here in a minute. First, I need everybody at home, grab two cards off the top of your deck. We're gonna continue with this awesome <laughs> YouTube style. Let's play Texas Hold'em. All right, I'm going to actually, instead of off the top, I'm gonna to draw mine off the bottom so I don't mess up the shuffle order right there like it really matters. They would have been dealt out anyway. Oh, snap. Awesome. All right, let's uh, burn a card. We're going to do the flop here. All right, well, trip fives. So there. <laughs> I wish my hand were face down now. I could get some better value here. Queen. Let's see if we get a runner heart here at the end. Oh, we did. Who flushed out? You lucky, lucky person. All right, well, <laughs> there you have it. Uh, that was very full housey. All sorts of things could have happened there. All right, today we're talking about chem face cards. Now, chem face cards, let's roll in one of the many boxes I have here. So chem face cards have an interesting history, all right? Uh, they go back a long way. They go back to the 1930s. And that's gonna surprise somebody out there, but most of you knew that. It's like, you think about 1930s and all the things that have changed, all right? We're talking about the days of prohibition. We're talking about huge gangster federal rivals, uh, pre-jet flight travel days. You know, instead of like commuting on a jet plane, it was like twin props, all right? You're flying across the Atlantic and the majority of people were probably boating across the Atlantic. Uh, speaking of gangsters, look what I have right here. These are 45 rounds big 45 bullet right here. You know, obviously these are full metal jacket and huge, huge, huge brass casing. These things are massive. They weigh a lot. This is the back in the day when, <laughs> you know, these are what they were loading into Tommy guns. I don't know if you guys know. Tommy guns, you know, the Chicago typewriter, duck, 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 Great Depression on. Man, those were crazy times. Bootlegging. Chem cards came out in that decade. And my grandfather actually served in World War II, and he recognizes he recognized chem face cards in the military. He's like, oh my gosh, those were chem face cards all the way up until his death, you know, a few years ago. He always was like, oh yeah, the red and blue arrow chem face cards, you know, he loved them. He wasn't a huge gambler, not like my dad, you know, my dad, uh, got a different level of <laughs> casino gambling nerdery. But yeah, so chem face cards are widely recognized. They set a lot of standards as far as like quality goes. Producing plastic cards back in the 1930s and 40s was just amazing, phenomenal, all right? So these go back a long way. Now, there is some recent history, but we'll get to that in a minute. I wanna talk about my, should I, leave, should I leave these in the shot here? Let me put them way out here as a reminder of the roots of chem. Not that they, you know, I'm just saying of the era when they came about. Now, with me and my history, you guys are probably pretty familiar with this. I have this old deck from the 90s. My dad was the original purchaser of this and I inherited him because, like an idiot, teenager, young, maybe I was like 11, I don't remember. But either way, I took these to a beach in California when we lived in Southern California and look at this. I left them in our little Toyota minivan, warped beyond recognition, all right? Holy smokes. Uh, so I kind of inherited these. I've traveled around with these. Uh, don't be like John. Don't be like me, referring to myself in the third person. Don't be like John and don't leave plastic cards in a hot car, all right? They will warp. Uh, yeah, it clearly says that, you know, on the packaging and everything, the temperature range and everything. Don't do it, okay? Too valuable. If you're going to travel, get some paper cards, all right? This is my review paper Card. This is my review table, and I have my paper cards here. These have these are retired. These should be thrown away, but they're still lingering because they have some value in front of the camera. Now, in I've also yeah. So anyway, <laughs> moving on. Uh, so with me, I have my own history with chem face cards, and you know I loved these. These were my first plastic cards, first ones I was exposed to, and I kind of had a falling away with chem. It went in the mid. 2000s, uh, looking for other options, and the, the, and recently there have been other options coming to the table. So, you know, that said, right around that era of 2005, we jumping back to the chem history line right now, there was, oh, by the way, you can see, can you see that? 
1993 chem. That's when these were made. Mid 90s. That's when we I picked these up. And my when yeah my <laughs> when my father purchased them and I inherited them after I totally destroyed them. I felt bad about. I still feel bad about that. So in the mid 2000s, the chem was purchased by the U.S. Playing Card Company, and this is evident through their packaging. Let me just ah, might as well. Don't know if you guys have seen this, but I might as well show you. So you can see the top one. This is the one that we purchased in the 90s, okay? Notice it says Chem Plastic Playing Cards. And then, more recently, this was picked up last year, the U.S. Playing Card Company, bridge-sized cards. The poker-sized case looks like this. Hmm, I wonder who purchased Chem? Well, there you have it, the United States Playing Card Company. Bold and brash right there. Thankfully, they are still, here's the trademark card, luckily they are still made in the USA. I love that. I love supporting USA-made products because I live in the USA. If you live in a different country, I would expect you support um, your own country's products, like, for example, Italy. So go out, buy a Lamborghini and a Ferrari. Awesome, right? Either way, not everything I buy is American, like the camera you're looking through. Not made in the United States. But whenever I can, you know, support American-made products. Let me go ahead and put this back. All right, so that's a, that's a very brief history of chem. You know, they were adopted by World Series of Poker, not after their comeback. Uh, U.S. Playing Card Company, not sure if you saved chem, but if you did, thank you for saving chem. We need these cards in our lives, all right? So uh, here's a bridge-sized little uh, marked card right here, the trademark card. Now, with any sort of product here that I roll in front of the cameras, I always, always, always discuss quality control. And chem is no different, but uh, you're gonna find that the two things I'm gonna talk about might not squarely fit in quality control. I'm giving you a heads up before we dive into it in case I forget to mention it later. All right, uh, first let's talk about this deck. When you look at it closely, I have, I'm gonna probably have to roll in the picture, but these corners aren't perfect. And you know, I was looking at them, you know, a few months ago, and I was like, these are not perfect. This sucks. Quality control is no good, you know? And then a few weeks ago, I opened up my gold deck and I compared corners, and it occurred to me that I've been putting wear and tear on this deck for the last year and uh, three months, year, almost year and a half on this deck right here, the black deck. And that wear and tear is what I, what I was noticing as edge wear. Oh, so this gold deck doesn't really have that problem. The black deck does, imposed by me. All right, so there goes, that was my first quality control issue, and that kind of shoots that out of the sky. We'll, you know, talk about that in material. So, oh, well, well, all right, so quality control is great when it comes to cutting the deck, like the cutting of the cards, not cutting the deck like, you know, this, but like actually, you know, manufacturing it is actually very, very excellent. The the whole graphic here on the back, the backs are perfectly centered, beautifully and consistently across both of these decks. The faces, beautifully, beautifully, you know, consistent. There's no color fading across the deck. It is just lovely, all right? So, so far, quality control is looking very, very good until, uh-oh, could the plot thicken here? Well, a little bit. Let's roll in the old versus the new, all right? So these are my old bridge-sized cards, okay? 90s, mid-90s, Victorian. You saw the 1993 stamp right there earlier. Uh, these, let's put them like this. Okay, look at the vivid colors here. Uh-oh, what's going on here? I'm looking through my viewfinder. I'm not sure you're seeing the difference here. The, the one on the left, the old 94 ones, are incredibly vivid in coloration. The reds, the vibrant yellows. And then, so here are some poker-sized ones, just by way of comparison. Bridge size, poker-sized. Uh, what's going on, Kim? Is this a quality control thing? Well, let's have a little discussion about it. When I look at this, I'm not seeing a quality control issue. What I'm seeing is maybe middle management, all right? Maybe upper management. I can see the guy, the girl, you know, the worker who's printing these off, who's making these cards, you know, or the artist even, the designer, he or she would just be like, uh, you know, we want more red, you know, we want it to be more vibrant. And then you're like, is that enough? More, more red, more vibrant color, more color, more, 
you know, and then they get this, these vibrant, awesome colors. And then they're like, yeah, that's what we want. Sell them. Okay. Good. That's what I love. I love passion. Okay. Forget science. You know, the, the world is too scientific. Now everything's engineered. Everything's scientific. Everything's calculated. Every now and then it's just to go out and get a ridiculously fuel hungry Mustang V8, you know, and somebody's like, well, it's actually a DOHC twin cam, very sophisticated, you know, and <laughs> very efficient engine. All right, all right, all right, all right. But you, but you see what I'm saying. Sometimes you just need a little bit of zing in your life, a little bit of this X factor. And that's what the 90s chem cards brought to the table. Now, all of a sudden, what are we looking at here? in 2014, 2015, and right now it's February of 2016. What are we getting here? We're getting an accountant standing over the manufacturers of this, and they're like, less ink, less, less ink, less. Does it still look red? Eh, kind of pinkish, whatever, less. And then, you know, I can see somebody on the floor, you know, just asking, well, why? Why are we cutting back on our ink that we're using on these cards? And the accountant would obviously, like, have the numbers. All right, well, let's see. Uh, our saves, um, you know, two dollars off of our bottom line and then you know what would you say oh well two dollars a deck that equates to you know however many decks we sell and he's like no 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 he or she would be like no 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 we're talking it saves you know a couple of dollars for the whole run for the whole year scratching your head what why don't we huh? does that really does that make sense to anybody i don't like it i'm kind of disappointed here that we've gone from exciting vibrant passionate to just kind of blah Ah, good enough. Nobody plays with the Jokers, right? Just leave it. I'm not saying that is what happened, but sometimes I look at these and I feel like that's what happened. You know, kind of that letdown. You know, I, I don't know. So is that really quality control or is that just manufacturing? Because these are both consistently kind of drab, I'm going to say that's a decision that corporate has made. All right, that's that's well, I, all I can speculate, right? If you work at camp, if you're the CEO of US playing card company and you know, I don't know if you know the operations, maybe the chief operation officer <laughs> can tell us, you know, in the comments, what the heck is going on here? You know, I, I don't know. There could be a legitimate reason. Like one thought that we've had is it is possible that with an excess amount of ink, it does chip off and flake off. You'll see that there's a little bit of wear. I might have to roll in a picture, but no, maybe you can see that. There's a little bit of wear where this ink has come off right here. You can see the white through this. Of course, that might just be through the heat damage. I don't know. Don't leave your, if I, did I say this? I'll say it again. Don't leave your plastic cards in your, in a hot car. It doesn't make sense. If you're going to travel, use paper. All right, enough on that. Let's get some of these jokers out of the way. Um, next, we're going to talk about design. Um, one thing about, you know, the whole chem world is every now and then, all right, should I, <laughs> do you guys want to hear a funny story? Um, have you ever played with like, okay, this was back, you know, in the nineties, you play with like old men or you're around old men playing five card draw. This is back in the day before Texas Hold'em really, you know, became super popular. So we're playing five card draw and needless to say, there's, you know, a lady at the table and, you know, she's going to hold the cards up to her face as she looks at the cards. And of course, what are these old men, these dirty old men going to say? You know, you hear this as a kid, you know, and then they're like, <laughs> you have some of my chem on your lips. <laughs> you know, and as a kid, you're just like, what does that mean? I don't get it. What does that mean? You know, whoa, whoa, you know, not funny. So you have to deal with some of that nonsense when you're playing with certain crowds. Just prepare for it. There's nothing you can do about it uh, other than just maybe a polite laugh <laughs> or just, you know, punch him in the face. All right. So design is our next topic here. I already mentioned the arrow the famous arrow design. Uh, I think traditionally the famous ones that like my grandfather and father always talk about are the red and blue arrow, you know, design on the backs. That's fine. That's great. Uh, I have no problems with it. It doesn't jump out to me maybe because I was, you know, I've been exposed to so many different cards and, you know, it's just kind of standard for me. But did they set the standard? Perhaps, all right. Um, but just to wrap up quality control, quality control as far, as far as I'm concerned is just leaps and bounds above average. Can I, I don't know if that'll fit on my graphic. Leaps and bounds above average. Yeah, the, the design though, okay, I mean, they kind of set standards here. A, kind, a lot of standards that people expect. It's like, you look at the pips here, the pip boxes, uh, compared to a normal, what do I have here? This is a paper bicycle, plastic coated paper, air cushioned, standard index bicycle card for those of you that care. Uh, you can see there's a, a blue box around the pips. Well, in this case, the face card. And around the chem they actually have colored so instead of blue they have it matching the suit so they'll have 
red, and then black. And they're very thin, fine, beautiful lines. Love it. The pips are easy to read. There's no confusion. That is a club. That is a diamond. That is a heart. That is a spade, okay? Unlike the World Series of Poker 2015, talking about the Modiano Platinum. Oh dear, I think I made a separate video about that. So, you know, the design is world class. Kind of set, again, set standards as far as, uh, well, continuing plastic cards. I mean, the, the pips had been around before that. All of this, you know, wasn't new, but they stuck with a very solid, solid design that just does its job so effectively. The other thing that I like about the design, um, this is more of a mechanical design of the card. I really like the texture. The texture is, it's hard to describe, but when you look at it closely, it's almost like a wood grain texture. It's not just like little dots, like a bead blasted design. It's really this elegant, you guys really just need to, I mean, I'll see if I can get a picture of it, but you guys really need to see this texture in person and feel it. It just feels so good, okay? And I consider that part of the design of the card. Uh, poker size, bridge size, you have a huge selection with the Chem brand, the Chem mark, okay? So um, moving on to materials. Uh, so design, you know, I'm going to say above average because they kind of set standards here with their design and the actual physical design of the card is superb. Now materials. Materials, uh, is, it's cellulose acetate, okay? Uh, there's other card companies that make cellulose acetate. Here's the, uh, speaking of the Modiano Platinum, look at that wonderful rounded spade right there. Is that awesome or what? Uh, the Modiano Platinum are also made out of 100% acetate. You can see right there, out of focus. <laughs> 100% acetate. Now, if you go and Google cellulose acetate, hazardous food, I can't remember exactly what I Googled, or internet searched. Uh, if you do an internet search, you'll find it. The FDA website actually says that cellulose acetate is a non-hazardous food packing material. In not so many words. What? People, you can wrap food in cellulose acetate? That's a great parent material for these cards. Now, I'm not saying you go out and you know eat off of these cards. You know, but I'm saying you can <laughs> there you can rest assured the parent material of this these cards, not saying anything about the ink or the finishing, is very stable and non-toxic. That's wonderful. So materials. Okay, oh now coming back to the wear on the corners here. The materials are a little bit soft. I mean I've had this the my nineties deck, you know, we play, we played with these through the warpage until about, you know, early 2000s, mid 2000s. So 10 years of solid use, five years of additional kind of on and off use. And now back in front of the cameras, kind of just, you know, for reference use. And these things have endured very well. Very, you know, solid deck. Uh, I would suspect if you rotate them through, like I recommended in a previous video, if you rotate them through all your other cards, all your decks, they'll easily last you 10 years. That's a great you know, time frame for a deck of cards. You wash them off, they're washable. Materials, uh, Ace, you know, again, world-class, I can't say enough good things about the materials. Uh, durability, uh, there, <laughs> people may criticize it because you can't leave them in a hard car. Uh, that's where like paper cards, Here, here's a new deck I, we haven't played with. I like these, uh, I bought a few of these, what was it, last year or two years ago? I can't remember. It's, we go through so many of these. I really like the 130-year anniversary of bicycle cards. And that's what paper cards are for, right? Well, my paper cards, I can leave in a hot car, and they, are, they, don't, they don't warp like that. Fine. Uh, I'm trying to think. Have I seen any paper cards warp from heat damage? Not sure about that. We'll get back to you. Water damage, yes, but I don't know about, <laughs> I don't know about heat damage. Uh, so, you know, that may be a criticism about durability, uh, you know, kind of some soft material, maybe, but I mean, they still shuffle beautifully. I mean, they're just such a lovely thing. This is the classic weave shuffle. Just going really slow here, trying to get that wonderful weave there. So, I mean, even with, you know, those little tiny imperfections, they shuffle like a dream. So here's the tough question for you. Would you recommend these chem cards to somebody who are looking for their first set of plastic face cards? Well, think about it, you know? I don't know if I would. They're just too expensive. What if they hate them? Then they're out, you know, 30, 40 bucks. Uh, you know, speaking US dollars here. So what would you recommend? Uh, there are lots of less expensive alternatives that people will give people a taste of the plastic playing card world 
you know, for, you know, kind of a discount, you just get one deck. You don't need to buy two. I mean, I know you can get individual chem decks, but maybe I would recommend like Ace Authentic. If you like these, the odds are you're really going to like these. Again, if, you know, price isn't an issue, like if somebody's very wealthy, yeah, just go out and buy some chem cards and see if you like them. Uh, recommendations. I would say for the majority of people, I would say absolutely I recommend the chem face cards. World class. I mean, they, they set so many standards. And they are the most flexible card I've ever measured. I made that film about flexibility and shuffling specifically so I wouldn't have to go through and show you all the pictures here. Chem face cards are the most flexible cards that I found on the market today. Ace, Fournier, um, Del Negro are all other great starting options if you're a little hesitant to jump into chem, mostly because of cost. Leave a comment. I mean, there will be people that know more about all of this than I do. I'm just expressing my opinions here, and I hope that helps somebody out there. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please subscribe.